Hi, this is Tim Belcher. I'm working with a designer at a lake house in western Virginia on Smith Mountain Lake. And a lot of the renovations here are trying to make this house feel more country, more like a cabin. And this room in particular has spectacular lake views. And the designer thought it would be the perfect place for a large statement slab table. We searched in my local hardwood dealers in the greater D.C. Virginia area for many months and we could only find slabs that were too narrow, too short, too twisted, or too cupped until we came across these three sequential ash slabs that were far too narrow individually but I thought maybe I could take two of them and make my own slab from them. So this is a butterfly slab double live edge resin infill table. This is how I made it. I originally purchased three slabs for this project thinking I may need to use all three to get the width I desired. But after some cleanup and measurements I was fairly certain I could get the slab I wanted from just two of them. This would make the pair book matched and would include some great bark inclusions for resin infill. The slabs were 11 feet long, longer than the CMC, so I leveled them and attached them to long strips of MDF. This let me secure them and flatten the majority of one side and then allowed me to slide the entire slab down to flatten the rest. Then before flattening the other side I could trim what would be the jointed edge as well as rough trim the slab to length. A thinner and shorter slab will naturally have less cupping and twisting which will mean a bit thicker slab in the end. This is a great older tip from Jimmy DeResta using compressed air to freeze the hot glue makes it release very easily. Then I could flip the slab, secure it directly to the table, and flatten the other side. With one slab down it was a rinse and repeat on the second. My depth of pass was fairly shallow, maybe an eighth of an inch, and I believe in total it probably took six hours of milling to flatten the slabs. Then I was ready for a test fit. I had used track saw extensions to create both the jointed edges and there was a small gap in the center of the slab large enough to make the seam very visible. I often see videos of better craftsmen than myself work that edge into perfect shape with hand tools but that is not my skill set. I do, however, have a large robot that can fairly easily cut a straight line. So I was able to secure the rough jointed edge against some stops and clamp the slab down. Then I could remove those stops and cut a very small amount off the edge. This was sort of my CNC version of a large edge joiner. And I could just rerun that program on the second slab. And then we finally get a preview of the entire tabletop, complete with those butterfly bark inclusions. Tad more flattening to do, both to get the top as flat as possible and also to create a reference surface for the dominoes that will help join the slabs. Here I'm marking those locations and moving the slabs around to a comfortable position to drill those mortises. I believe in total I did 12 dominoes, one each, about 4 inches from the table ends, and then 10 inches apart. There are certainly times where I wish I had more help in the shop. I think the most difficult part about this glue up was simply positioning the stock.
But a little prep made the glue up fairly stress-free, which for me seems rare. I let it bake in the clamps for a day or so, and then took advantage of a friend's visit to get it out and moved over to a set of sawhorses. Then I could move on to the legs. This is construction grade 4x4's Douglas fir which is the standard kiln dried option in my area. Now I had seen a video by Sean Boyd of Sean Boyd made this. Sean makes fine furniture and I really like the simplicity of his leg design for this table. Now as I said, Sean makes fine furniture and I do not, at least not yet. First, I knew my legs would be black. That would match the chairs and bench already purchased. And this would allow the tabletop itself to appear to float and be the focal point. Secondly, I was using trash wood for lack of a better term. My concept was something in the way of modern picnic table legs. Something beefier, less curves, something that would appear more like four inch metal tube. And indeed, I thought about purchasing metal legs for this project until I saw that video by Sean. These are two of eight pieces I need to cut for the legs, plus four stretchers. Anyway. I would take each set and mark the stretchers and custom fit them on the bandsaw. I did a passable job of making them fit. I used glue and countersunk pocket hole screws on each of the joints here. Those coarse aluminum pocket hole screws hold very tight. As I mentioned, I used a Minwax shaded poly to blacken the legs. It actually only needed one good coat. Back to the top. I spent some time with a chisel both removing bark from the edge and from the inclusions. I could have left the bark in the inclusions and it would have been fine, but I thought removing it would provide more depth with a transparent resin. There was a lot of sanding on this project. I'm not going to show much of it here, but I would bet that I spent at least 20 hours of sanding. Here I'm using Tyvek tape to secure some polyethylene plastic to the bottom for the resin pour. The color choice of the resin was supposed to be a transparent blue, almost water-like color, and I think I was close. The first pour was a bit darker, providing a deeper blue bottom or base layer. The second was a bit more transparent to see some of that depth in the inclusions. And after 24 hours, it was back to sanding and prep for finish. I did need to trim the table to length. I wanted to start with a 45 degree chamfer on the edge and I got a little too aggressive with the cut. After checking my fingers, I backed off and did that cut in much smaller passes. I then came in about half that distance to make a straight cut across, giving me a nicely shaped profile on both ends. I spent a little time abusing my sanders on the edges, where possible using the random orbit or even the belt sander, and using the mouse on the odd or sharp areas. And then it was on to finishing. I took the bottom to 120 grit, and applied several coats of poly. On the top, I spent quite a bit of time on each grit on the way to 240. There I did three full poly coats, sanding between, 
before I moved on to wipe on Polly. And the truth is I'm not done yet. I'm not happy with the final finish and likely have several more coats to go. But I can attach the legs and for now call this project done. As someone new to making videos, you watching this and giving it a like is very helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please comment on the video. I try to respond to them all. And if you did like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Feel free to share this or to tag someone who would appreciate a table like this one. And honestly, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.